Do as I say, not as I do. That's been the standard for the Obama administration since the president took office. Obama came in on a campaign promise to be the, and I quote, I'm holding a book, I can't really do the air fingers, the most transparent president in history. Here's what he said back in 2008. I'll make our government open and transparent so that anyone can ensure that our business is the people's business. Now, Justice Louis Brandeis once said, sunlight is the greatest disinfectant. And as president, I'm going to make it impossible for congressmen or lobbyists to slip pork barrel projects or corporate welfare into laws when no one's looking. Because when I'm president, meetings where laws are written will be more open to the public. No more secrecy. Wow. No pork barrel projects or corporate welfare? I guess he didn't read his own failed stimulus bill. It's amazing how that's all changed over the course of the president's term, but... As you would guess, Obama's not changing his do tune despite the evidence against him. Maybe the president's just too smart, can't air fingers quote again, like his campaign is claiming for people to understand what he really meant by transparency. After all, the last Democratic president had a problem with the definition of is. Uh, progressives like to set the rules for everyone else in society, then live by their own rules. Here's what the most open administration's really been doing intentionally holding meetings with lobbyists outside the White House to keep them off the official visitor log. Campaign manager Jim Messina used his private email account to work backdoor deals with insurance companies to get their support for Obamacare. And the administration has been clamping down on Freedom of Information Act requests. Denials for requests are up 10% from last year. And we also can't forget the White House's efforts to block information in the Fast and Furious scandal and playing stupid on the terrorist attacks in Libya. When you tally it all up, according to PolitiFact, Obama's only come through on five of his 14 campaign promises. And when it comes to transparency, I know Obama's not a big numbers guy, you know, like Romney. But that's not a very good success rate. And that's just half of it. Christopher Horner is the author of the new book, The Liberal War on Transparency, Confessions of a Freedom of Information Criminal, and he joins me from Charlottesville, Virginia. How you doing? I'm great, Andrew. Thank you. I, I got the book with my finger open here to a, a chapter on uh, public email versus private email. In other words, you know, if we have a job and we send internal emails through our company email, pretty much we've accepted the fact that our employers... Uh, can access it. If we want to deal in private email, we have to use our Google or Yahoo or what Gmail accounts. But when the president promises transparency and his people start to use private accounts to make deals with insurance companies, that's not so transparent. It's also illegal. Oh, that too. Uh, we've got the Presidential Records Act, the Federal Records Act, and it's a violation of the criminal code of the U.S. Code, Title 18, if you destroy a federal record. And guess what? When they take to AOL to work these deals with the drug companies to buy $150 million in ads for Obamacare and get $4 billion in return, when the program that Solyndra made infamous was executed on 14 separate private, by pure coincidence, a series of isolated incidents, 14 separate private email accounts, you have to copy your government account on this, and guess what? It looks like they weren't on any of these, and I found it throughout the government is going as high as the Deputy White House Chief of Staff, going down through the various agencies. You alluded to these off-campus meetings with lobbyists, which of course weren't going to happen. Those are arranged on private email accounts. But as federal employees, it's against the law. If you work outside of the email account the taxpayer paid for you, and you're not copying the agency, and worse, if you're destroying these records. And by the way, I found systems set up to deliberately destroy records. There's a cyber bonfire going on in this administration. Not quite what he promised, is it? Now, certainly it's not against the law for, let's say, an attorney general to be involved in a uh, gun program where people get killed and we lose a border patrol agent. For him not to disclose all the documents is requested by Congress, am I right? Well, they're claiming an enormous number of documents are privileged, executive privilege, essentially attorney-client privilege for the president. And what they do, and I point this out, is their favorite trick is to point to a stack of documents they turned over. Let's say I gave you 400,000 documents about the cylinder boondoggle. What's the more important number, 400,000 turned over or the 10,000 you refused to turn over, called the good stuff? Obviously, that's what they're trying to distract from. So they're stonewalling on Fast and Furious, and it appears for very good, very tragic reason. 
They're stonewalling on a lot of things, but they're not just stonewalling Congress. They're stonewalling taxpayers who are trying to hold the president to his promise of transparency. But it's it, again, it's far worse than that. What I found is these guys make that Nixon fellow look like a piker. This is deliberate. It's organized. It's from the top down. It's government wide. They're actually destroying records in addition to going offline, taking government offline, which is also unlawful. Uh, you have a headline, what is a reasonable FOIA search in the age of Obama? Now, if you're talking about troop movements, we certainly don't want the government uh, giving out information on where troops are going or where they are in a theater of operation or any kind of military secret that might get guys killed. But what is the standard for the Freedom of Information Act under Obama? Or is there even one? Right. Well, that's a very good question because the standard under the law is the search has to be reasonably calculated to find the requested documents. It doesn't mean they have to find them, but it has to be reasonably calculated to do so. And by the way, the last two chapters are a how-to for you and how to get around these tricks. But what they've got to do is look where the records are. And I have filed a few. And in fact, we filed the first lawsuit last month, two weeks ago, where we know someone has decided to create a firstname.lastname.epa at gmail.com. Those are public records. And if we prove this person has a habit of doing this, and we did, you've got to search that person's Gmail account. I've had the Department of Commerce go to someone's home, someone who's now retired, and uh, search her home computer and her private email account because she acknowledged doing public business on it. They have to search this if you've got some reasonable belief that they're using a private account. And by the way, the law requires that they copy the agency. It's clear they're not. If they destroy it, if they delete these records, they're also breaking the law. It's unlawful. To do this and not copy the agency, it's a violation of the criminal code if they destroy them. But they've also set up systems to actually deliberately destroy records.